Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated, where I'm just thrilled to death. Today, I'm joined by actor Lonnie Tupu. So welcome, Lonnie. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And hello <laughs> to everybody out there. <laughs> And it's so nice of you to uh, to agree to uh, to join us. You're you're in. Where are you at right now? Okay, so right now I'm in Sydney, um, Australia, and yeah. New South Wales, uh, which is different from Victoria. Um, if some of you are into Australia, um, and we don't, we are not in lockdown at all. Um, bringing That's everybody good. up to date and uh, Victoria is loosening some of the um, the rules and regulations right now. Um, they've been in curfew for some time, for some weeks, which yeah. has been really tougher than all. Yeah. Um, but uh, we've been uh, spared that, touch wood. Exactly uh, right. But uh, it's one of those situations that we have, uh, which um, I know you can all appreciate in your neck of the woods as well, throughout your country that uh, it, this is uh, something that uh, can't be taken lightly. It's a very serious matter. Exactly right. And, uh, yeah. Mm. Were you on the lockdown earlier in the year? No, we weren't. Um, although we, you know, there were restrictions play where we, we, we went to totally in, in total lockdown. We weren't, um, able to go to restaurants for some time. We right. had to wear masks. And now um, we've loosened the uh, restrictions in cafes and restaurants, and you've got to be 1.5 meters apart in terms of tables, etc. Yeah. Um, there are some restaurants here that are wear all the way wearing masks, and you have to sign in with the queue. There's a little queue code that you sign in your, your name, your... Um, detail to email etc before you go in into the place um and you can sit and have a beer in the corner <laughs> yeah if you want yeah to. that's that actually yeah. sounds really similar to to what we're going through in in west virginia we it's pretty pretty similar we had a couple of months where we were kind of quarantined you know everything was pretty much shut down um but since may yes. we we've um we've been running you know fairly fairly light on the restrictions, although it's still, it's still disrupting um, school, you know, for the, the school age kids. It's, yes. they're trying to go, but a lot of it is having to be done virtually right now. I think there just has to be um, a lot of common sense into this. And, um, you know, um, I'm working in a place where masks are, are mandatory yeah. um, throughout the school. Where working in a film and television school. Um, funnily enough, as a COVID safety uh, supervisor, which means <laughs> the students there who are completing their bachelor uh, degrees uh, are used to having to shoot their end of year project. And the projects right. could be one or two days or three days. Uh, and I'm on set as a COVID safety officer, making sure that there's no love fest on set. There's no contact <laughs> set between the actors. Uh, and I, you know, begin by saying these are the rules of engagement for the day. And so I have yeah. just as much responsibility as the first assistant director. And if I see anything that uh, is contravening that, then I have to sort of get up with the first assistant director. And so they listen to me. You know. um, yeah. So it's important. How, how uh, did you get that role? Um, they were they were on. Uh, they just didn't have supervisors in the school. Yeah. Um, to uh, to to cover all the um, end of year shoots, and so my daughter actually got it for me, so I was very happy about that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, so we're both supervisors, um, and she, you know, supervises sets as well. Uh, so that's a, a welcome uh, addition to what I'm doing because yeah. there really isn't anything um, for most actors. For example, hospitality was one of the areas where you could actually get you know, a, a job and uh, to supplement your in income or if there sure. was no work in front of you know, the camera, for example, then you'd hop into put your old waiter's, you know, apron on and prance <laughs> around and you know, serve guests. Um, so that kind of stopped, but um, this will take me probably up sporadically until the end of the year. And 
I'm, I'm yeah. going to focus on doing photography, but I'll come to that in a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, now that's real. I always find that really interesting because acting in a in a normal year is a very difficult profession. So a lot of people we talk to, they they've got something else going on, kind of on the side to to fill the mm. the time between jobs or or whatever. But this year has been so difficult. And it's, I'm sure work especially has been tough to, uh, to come by. That's, that's pretty great that you've, that you've kept yourself busy. Yes. Um, the funny thing is I was talking to, um, to the commercial a couple of months ago and um, the wardrobe mistress there was saying that she's working on various commercial shoots that are being directed from an iPad in Los Angeles. So yeah, because America is in a you know they can't go ahead and, and and shoot productions. There were a couple of guys in in Los Angeles <laughs> sitting with their iPads directing the shoot on the ground in Sydney, and that's that's happening more and more. Yeah, that's, um, that's so interesting. Do you think we'll ever get back completely to the way it was, or do you think some of these things that we're going through, especially that re, you know the remote. Um, you know, when you're trying to get a part, doing it remotely or, or the directing, you know, from a different location. Do you think we'll keep some of those? I think so. Um, for example, uh, you can't go in and test now for screen tests physically. So they're right. asking you to do a Zoom test. Or well, what they will do is actually you have to self-test at home and uh, or an office have an office and uh, I use a, a piece of the hardware called a PIVO, P -I -V -O, which you can yeah. put your phone yes. on and you can it can follow you around or it just sits on a tripod and so you do your test and then you just send it in. I've got a couple of jobs that way, small jobs, but um, that's the way it is and I think that will stay for a, quite a, a long time. Um, it also means that the agencies, casting agencies, don't have to spend money renting spaces right uh so that's happened a lot um in terms of work well it really depends there's there were productions slated for melbourne uh and of course lockdown happened and so that's not going to happen um there are covid safety sets happening now in sydney um, in new south wales so that's happening on the ground uh but they're very very strict if you you know, you arrive on set as an actor uh, and you get your temperature taken. Right. What I didn't know was if my temperature was above 70, for example, or 76, 67, 67 I, I've got to come back on that one. Um, <laughs> Whatever it's supposed to be. Degrees, yeah. Uh, then uh, and you go on set and you were stood, down. there was a B team of actors standing by. Really? So I didn't know that. So that's what's happening now. And there's also oh. a B team of crew. If crew, certain uh, positions in the crew, uh, you know, have their temperatures taken and they can't get on set, then there's a B team coming in as well. So the budgets have been kind of expanded to cater for right. the second crew. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a whole new world out there. How do you uh, get around, you know, the, it, I don't, I don't know how you would have the the intimate type of interactions. You know, how do you get around not being able to to really get in close with somebody when you're filming? Okay, so one of the questions I asked when I was first, um, uh, you know, when I first went in to um, be inducted into becoming a supervisor was, you have a scene where there are two actors in a one in the driver's seat, one in the passenger seat. Yeah. And according to Australian film um, industry rules now and safety rules, that is out. What you have is now a passenger, an actor in the front seat, in the driver's seat, and one in the back seat. That's how they can shoot that. Um, oh, okay. And you've got the film crew outside the car. So that's changed. Yeah. Um, a person on set, uh, when I was involved on set uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, in the rehearsal, 
went to touch another actor. One actor touched another actor's cheek, and then I had to go to the first and say, "That that can't happen." And they went, "Oh, okay, right." Yeah. So then they had to cheat the distance. So if you've got an intimate scene between two actors, what normally they'd be like a, a, a foot away from each other's each other's face, yeah. now has to be about three and a half feet, and they will change that um, look with the lenses. So the shoot okay. long okay. lenses, which compacts the scene, make it make it look closer. and makes them look closer. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I wondered how we would uh, get around that because you you know you can't you can't really risk having people in you know, close contact like that. You have to have some type of procedure. Not something. unless we're the only thing that can, that can happen, Mike, is, is that if there is a couple who are actors living in the same house and they're being tested and all of that, that's the only time now right. that you can have an intimate scene. Other than that, forget about it. Yeah, well, and that makes sense. If they're, if they're both in the, they're already in the same area living together. You know, and they're tested and they're fine, then then that would, yeah. yeah, that would make sense. I well, was kind of you, you go. Ahead. No, it's okay. Go ahead. No, I was um, intrigued. Uh, the last, I think there was a um, where it was it was was a Pence. There was a um, a debate, the second to last major de debate, where there was. Uh, screens in front of the two. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, the vice president debate. Yeah, they had yeah. the it was like a full screen in front of them. That's right. But at the end of that, they went and hugged each other, and I went, <laughs> "No, no, you've just defeated the whole thing." No. Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah, we we commented on that as well. It's like, well, that didn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. <It's> like, huh? <laughs> anyway. We're we're still learning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This uh, it's been it's so difficult to change those habits just like you know you wear your mask when you're out but you know when you stop to talk to somebody or or you need you know to scratch your face or whatever it is you just instinctively reach to pull that mask down to say something which you know totally negates what it's there for um as long as you're 1.5 away from each other <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to have a meeting with, with someone recently and um, I wore a, a mask in the office. And uh, so I had a cup of tea. And of course, you sit down and have a cup of tea and, you know, I'm, I'm this, the, the distance away from this person. And then I had to take my mask off to have my tea. Well, um, yeah, you can do that as long as you're at 1.5. Yeah. As long as you're healthy and staying away from everybody. That's, mm -hmm. yeah, I mm -hmm. know it's so weird because now, Anytime you get a sniffle or, you know, a fever or, you know, any aches, pain, you know, normal cold symptoms, you kind of freak out a little bit. You know, you have to go and, and get tested oh, yeah. and make sure it's nothing more serious than just a, you know, just a cold or, you know, a seasonal type of thing. Well, the interesting thing is I was reading an article yesterday and uh, the, the rules of engagement have changed. Um, and this lady was, is the head of uh, safety uh, in Australia, work safety. And she was saying, you know, we all used to push on. When we had a cold, we'd go to work. Right. Flu, you know, silly enough to go to work, people did turn up. Well, that's all changed. And I yes. think for the good too, for the better. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. My uh, my day job's in a, in a hospital and it's, you know, you're uh, definitely not encouraged to come to work if you have any, you know, uh, any uh, suspicion that you may yes. even be uh, becoming ill, then they want you to stay home because there's just too much danger of that spreading. Yes. Especially in a hospital, you don't want to cause people that are already compromised to, you know, to become. Uh, in what area are you in, in, in the hospital? Well, normally, so normally what I, I do is a job called, um, it's with patient experience. So I go in and and spend my days talking with patients to ensure that they haven't had any issues with their stay. Mm -hmm. And if there's something that came up, whether it's with the nurses, doctors, you know, the cleanliness of the room, whatever it is, I'll fix that issue. Um, yeah. Or at least yeah. try to. But, you know, with when this COVID hit, you know, those face to face meetings just stopped. 
you know, so, yes. so my role became more one of support. I, I'll help, you know, clean those COVID units. You know, I may be on wow. the phone with patients. You know, mm. I, I do a lot of training for hospital staff, you know, just wherever I'm, you know, it's really changed my normal role with that, but it's, uh, yes. it can get a little dicey. I, I've spent some time in those, in those COVID units and everybody's really extremely careful but everybody's also very nervous about it too. You know, it's, it's a, uh, uh, I don't know what yes. you call it. It's, it's not a, it's not a good feeling that you have during the day. You know, you're nervous. I was, yeah, reading about a doctor who had, uh, he's a New York doctor who had been um, through the Ebola plague and, um, and he was describing his day of and he said it's much worse. Uh, COVID nineteen is much worse than Ebola. Wow, I mean Ebola is pretty bad. Yeah, but his his day where he disrobed and everything was in a bleached bag and uh, yeah, whole nine yards before he even got home. And then when yeah. he got home, he just went through. You know, so uh, it's a big deal. I, yeah, I would step I step into the laundry room. That's as soon as I get in the house. And just strip everything off and put it right into the into the wash, yep. and then I'll go and and you know take a shower and kind of clean up that way. But it's just being careful, oh. you know, just just trying to, yes. you know. Thankfully, so far everybody's been fine. But oh, great! You know, we were we were like everybody else back in March or whenever this started. We were expecting okay, we're going to be careful for a month or so, and it's going to go away, and you know it's. Yeah, we're going to be dealing with this for for a long time i think even after they they eventually come up with a vaccine i think it's going to be quite some time before it's back to you know somewhat normal well yes it will and um you know trials for vaccines actually take quite a long time yeah and uh you know you've got to through, go through so much uh testing before it's actually uh considered uh, a good uh vaccine to begin with you know yeah, yeah that takes time so i wanted to i wanted to ask you i'll switch i'll switch gears i um i i'll start here i think the first thing that i ever saw you in acting wise was clear back in the 80s you had a role in uh, dolph lundgren's punisher movie <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> when Farscape came around, I was like, I've seen him before in The Punisher. Yeah. But I, I I enjoyed your role in that. That was I don't remember if that was that an was that one of your earliest roles or had you oh, been yeah, yeah I, I thought so. Oh, yes. Yeah. I loved it because the huge, big, you know, but film and um and it was great meeting Dolph Lundgren. You know I mean, yeah. you know, these guys have been. I watched the Expendables. I love the Expendables. Oh yeah, he's so <laughs> uh, good in that. <laughs> yeah, they're all good in that. You know, they are. They are boys' action film. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I just I had a ball, and it was one of those moments where, as an actor, you're really, really privileged and lucky to be in, in a in a in a project like that. There were were uh, there was a period of time in Australia where there was work all the time up in the Gold Coast with American productions coming down. Right. Um, and I think at the time, the dollar was something silly, like 57 cents to Australian to the American dollar. Wow. So, I mean, American projects, when they come to Australia and New Zealand, they save 30% of the budget to begin with, and then some. Yeah, uh, and when the dollar was that, you know, and we did Farscape, the dollar was pretty much just around the 60 cent mark and they said when it gets up to 74 percent 74 cents we'll be out of here when everybody went yeah sure but that's exactly what happened although we were under the umbrella of a german company and in the fourth year we were set to go i think on the wednesday and then on the thursday that the pin was pulled and that was the end yeah. of um, Farscape. I, um, yeah and that was such a such a disappointment i know for for me and, a, and a, I'm sure a ton of fans and probably for you guys as well that it, uh, I mean, luckily the movies you came back with the, you know, kind of the mini series and yes. finished it up, but yes. all of us would love to have had at least one more season. 
Oh yeah, I would. I wouldn't mind. Right, it, you know. it's such a great show. I, that's uh, um, I think a little different. You know, most sci-fi shows tend to have some similarities. I think this one was a little different, and it had uh, yeah. some humor, and such yeah. a great cast. And you, you had such a good role because it was, uh, you know, you you had kind of that villain role, but you had, you know, it was complicated. It wasn't just a, you just weren't a straight up bad guy. You know, you had a lot going on there. Thank you. I always think um, as an actor, if you've got a decent role in there, uh, I'm not talking really about a day role where you're going to do a couple of scenes on, on a project, but if you can find the flaws in the character and play the flaws, as yeah. opposed to just being um, a caricature of that particular person, that you're inhabiting, then I think it makes it much more interesting for fans and for the people watching. Yeah, uh, I'm watching a fantastic series right now called Shades of Blue with um, Jennifer Lopez. And um, oh gosh, oh I've I seen some a... of those. Yeah, she's a pol police woman, right? In it? Yeah, and can I think uh, of the actor's Ray name Liotta. right now? Ray Liotta. Sorry? Ray Liotta. Oh yes. man, that's a good show. Wonderful performances. Yeah, really, really wonderful performances from both of them, and from him, it's just there is there are some sweet scenes where you think you know who he is, and then he just delivers this just wonderful sequence of of scenes that you just go, oh my god, he, they're really really good actors. They're fantastic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's that's the truth. That's one of the one of the uh, things that that I loved about your character with. Uh, with Farscape was that you conveyed so much without even really having to say a lot. Like you could tell when, when Grace was angry, you could tell you didn't even have to say anything. You know, just, it always felt like you were just holding everything was just kind of simmering right under the surface. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the thing is as an actor too, I kind of try and set things up right from the beginning that when there are moments like that of silence or when there are quiet moments there, that there's, there's enough history for people to kind of go, what is happening? Right. <laughs> or they know what's happening. <laughs> yeah. And um, they gave me a great story arc to play with. And, uh, and it was so, and the Henson Company for a start. Yeah. They just had a great, production on their hands. I think also by coming to Australia, we gave it a different flavor. Right. And um, it was a bit anarchic. And I think that sort of helped in the storylines as well. And then when you got people like uh, Jonathan Hart, bless him, who yeah. came in and was playing Rigel. I mean, he was just the North person to work with. Yeah, just amazing. But, I mean, and so when I worked with the character of Rigel, I actually wasn't seeing, you know, this this thing in front of me. I, it was actually a real person that I was dealing with. Right. So that made it really wonderful. And, and, and the writing was fantastic. And then all the actors were fantastic as well, working with them. So it became, for me, a bit like a, a jazz performance weekly. I like that. Where you knew your lines, you had a, a run in front of the camera for the for, for the operators, and then they the directors just let you let you go, and yes. and it was wonderful. I, I I had I had a fantastic time on on Firescape, and I think, and it wasn't until we went to um, uh, to the first convention yeah. uh, in um, Los Angeles in the, the yeah after the first year we were just that we had something different on our hands. Yeah, it, well, yeah, it was that, it, it, it really was popular, which was why it was so strange that it, that it ended. And then I always wondered if, if you had made that show now and uh, uh, the original network had decided that they were gonna stop it, would it get picked up by one of these streaming services? You know, I would hope so. I, I would think it would, because you see that a lot now where, you know, Netflix or Amazon yes. or somebody will come in and kind of 
take a show over and, and keep it going where, you know, 15 years ago, they didn't really have those out there where they, you could get, because I remember you'd read about, they were shopping and trying to get it uh, into syndication and, and different things and just never, never really worked out. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, look, I don't know. I think, uh, <laughs> Look, it would be great to sort of pick it up again. And there have been rumours all the way along of whether or not that would uh, happen. But, you know, until they send the contract, I know. I'm just playing on. With well, yeah, <laughs> get what I'm doing. Because once this interview gets out there, phone's going to be ringing. <laughs> 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 that two opinionated guy said we should bring Farscape back. And so we're doing it. Absolutely. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Have you and, uh, have you and Australia there? is the best place to shoot it right now. Well, Hello, I'd, I'd, I'd love to go to Australia. I think they'd yeah. have to bring me in. It was my idea. Yes, absolutely. You know, I could, I could, I don't know, I could. We'll bring find a role. Donut. Yeah, I could bring the donuts or something there. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you still close with uh, with some of the cast? Um, when we, uh, well, especially Gigi. Um, yeah. And uh, sometimes I see David Franklin here because he flits back and forth yeah. between LA and Sydney. Um, other than that, oh, and, and uh, Anthony Simcoe when I do, but usually it's when we've been um, doing a convention and that's yeah. been a little while ago. Yeah, I know. That part, of, part of what uh, normally with these this show, it's, it's me and my, uh, my son doing them and, and we, cover a lot of conventions as press so we had all we had them lined up for the whole year and then wow. starting in about march they just started getting canceled one after the other yes get to get to go but you know what it was farscape your first was that your first kind of um introduction to the convention scene because that can be oh, that yeah. can be a, you know when you when you're on a show like that those a, a lot of fun but that can be kind of exhausting too the first few times you do it. Um, look, I, I had a ball. Yeah. First of all, you know, I was a great sort of, um, I had a, a great um, opportunity to, to see a fair bit of America. And I absolutely love America. I think um, I've been from the West Coast to the East Coast and in the middle, and I've just had a ball just traveling, meeting um, so many people and, uh, you know, really hospitable people and wonderful people. And they're just, you know, and coming up to say hello and why they love Farscape. And, yeah. and, um, and I used to get uh, fan mail from the beginning of people who were watching it with their mums and dads and, you know, and what it meant to them and, and That's how great. important it was. And you forget that as an actor. But I also think, that that's one of the wonderful aspects of doing conventions because you get a real great feedback from people. Yeah. Straight up, they come up to the table and 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 introduce themselves, and you find out <laughs> who they are, and and it suddenly becomes quite an important area of storytelling where you're kind of validated for what you do as an actor. When right when this. C-19 happened, COVID-19 happened, and I was trying to look for work. Well, I couldn't find work for a lot of money, even just stacking shelves down sure. the road. Um, and I suddenly thought, well, maybe I chose the wrong profession. Maybe I should have been an engineer <laughs> or a doctor. Um, but, you know, I'd be uh, dropping scalpels left, right and centre. <laughs> um, um, but I suddenly thought, actually, no, no, because people are tuning in right now and have been over the last year That's to right. see films, to see stories, to see documentaries, to see um, series and shows who are made by actors. Right. That's right. And that has got to be worth something, yeah. you know, that, that we can take people out of their lives and, and they follow this amazing journey is uh, a really blessed blessed thing to to do and to be able to do so i've gone back to the original thought well no actually i i did show to <laughs> choose the right profession um and storytelling is uh, what i do and um What's for important? example um 
last week on Thursday, what's today? Monday now. Yeah, Thursday. Right. Um, my voiceover agency rang up and said, oh, by the way, are you free for the next uh, week or so? And I said, why? And they said, well, you've got a book to read. And I said, and they want it done by the end of the month to coincide with the hard copy. Um, yeah launch and i said you've got to be kidding me i need it now I, I need to do my prep so so if i'm not in front of the camera um tomorrow night i will be in front of a microphone after i go to school i'm on, um, at the school this week um overseeing some shoots and then i race across the bridge to do a four-hour session of uh, recording this book uh, by a wonderful writer fleur mcdonald and the, the book is called the shearer's wife it's a continuation okay. of a story I've been working with, with a director called, oh, well, with a detective called Dave Burrows. Um, and so this oh. is the fourth book. So I'm really excited about that, but it means, it's meant that um, for the last few days I've been um, reading the book from where to go and then marking it up as I do, finding the characters' voices because they're all different characters. One of them is right. an Irish, Irishman um, and it sits in the 1980s and also 2020. Okay. So the story goes back and forth. So um, sometimes the little Irish accent that I've been working on does tend to go a little south. Um, <laughs> Are you going to give us a little bit of it? But no, I can't. No. <laughs> I'll embarrass myself. Um, so. So, uh, so that's that's something that I'll that um, I'm doing for the next uh, few nights, uh, which I'm really looking forward to. So, you know, I I, I guess it's something that, um, and also I think it's great for people to be able to, to for example, listen to podcasts uh, yeah. while they're traveling or listen to stories while they're traveling. So, this is a whole area which I think is really wonderful for for. Uh, for people to listen to so what you're doing is great so thank you well yeah i, I appreciate that it's uh i i'll say that it, fortunately for us this period has been beneficial because there's so many people out there that are you know not working as heavily as they normally would so they have some time to talk with us so we get some, some interviews that way I would give that up if we could get everything back to normal, no doubt. But it it has, you know, as far as uh, the podcast, it's given us shows to do, and we've been mm. able to put out, you know, more episodes than we normally would, which has been which has been uh, great. Uh, great, great. And it 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 I I love that you're you're doing you know the audio books. That's that's really uh, uh, terrific. You know, my son works in a uh, works in a library. He's a, he's a film student. But he works in a right. library, and and he loves the audio books. He and he has right. his favorite, you know, actors that there, there are certain actors that'll do. He'll read some books just to or listen to some books just to hear those actors because he enjoys them so much. So I, I think that's a, you know, with me, I was always you had to hold the book in your hand, you know. Uh, but anymore, everybody's just listening. You know, they're they're doing yes. it in the car and. You know, when they're doing their housework or at the gym or what you know wherever it is so i think yes terrific um I, I i think uh what have i been reading recently um well i'm i'm doing some research on a on a book called black saturday i've been given the opportunity to direct a play which i hope to do in the next 12, 12 to 24 months no it'll be 24 months onwards right um because for theaters to have a program then they're working 2021 is pretty much all sewn up, but so I'm looking at 22, 23. So I'm doing my research on that, and it's a great uh, uh, story called Think of a Garden. It was written by a playwright called John Newbell, who actually was um, an American Samoan writer, um, and he went to uh, Hollywood in the early days. Um, yes. He was taught by Thornton Wilder, um and so he i think he wrote the first episodes of gunsmoke oh okay. so yeah. yeah it's an amazing play so i've i'm going to look at well, that's putting exciting. Together, yeah putting together a team of people quietly behind the scenes so in a funny way because there's no pro uh, theater production right now um it's giving me time to put things together properly and quietly right 
and just make well, you might sure. as well take advantage of the time hmm the next big thing is that um i will look for you know um either theaters so i've got some theater um theaters that are the person that i've been dealing with is really wonderful is going to put me um we're, he's coming into a zoom meeting with me to his theaters to put yeah. so i've got to prepare a pitch i've got to prepare the elevator pitch yeah that's right <laughs> why it's important to do it um so that's good it's kind of clarifying what i'm doing so yeah well, that's great did you did you start out in the theater when you when you first started acting yes yes yeah I did um i think i started when i was about 17 16 17 oh, wow. well, 16 i was working um in television doing small bit you know bits and pieces um and then that was tv and z television New Zealand and then yeah. uh, around 21 22 I went to the um, uh, theater school New Zealand theater school um, which is now called Toy Fukare yeah and I trained there uh, for two years uh, and uh, then I, I you know I did my theater apprenticeship now the thing is that I was really really lucky about is that um, which isn't uh, available in Australia, sadly, is that I ha actually had a theatre apprenticeship. I was, as soon as I finished um, drama school, New Zealand drama school, I went into theatre, into a theatre corporate ensemble theatre right. uh, for two, three years. And then after that, I went to a larger theatre, which was a seven to 800 seater theatre of Presidio March. And I was there for another two and a half years before I got a television role called um, Country um uh not country practice um country gp and i was the gp and so oh. i was there for two years after that i came to um australia after that yeah yeah that so makes, but what it did do was give me a background to it to um to acting which was a really solid background a lot of students when they came out of um national institute of dramatic arts in australia or um uh, Whopper in, um, in in Victoria is that the, there are there are no pre apprenticeships, right. which is a really sad thing. You so if you're lucky to get a two to three play deal after you come out of school, then you're really really lucky. Otherwise, yeah. you've got to line up there like everybody else. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 really interesting. I I, I like to hear the uh, the background on it because you don't really. Like when you think of of acting, you don't necessarily think about the all the training and the practice that goes into it. You know, I think a lot of people think you just kind of show up and and act. And it's it's so uh, it's so I, I've got so much respect for for actors um, and, and 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 creative people in general because it's such a difficult task. You know, to to become somebody new, that's just not that easy. You can't just uh, for, for the most part. You know, most people can't just pick that up and, and do it. Yes, I think, um, you know, they say 10,000 hours. I remember literally walking out of the front door of the, of the school and uh, the artistic director of the school ran out and said, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, it takes 10 years to become a good actor. And I, and, and I thought, <laughs> but I've just done two years. <laughs> just, I'm ready right now. No, you're not. Um, he, was <laughs> he was absolutely right. <laughs> 10 years yeah um and it gave me an opportunity where i could i could teach what i knew so yeah, I, I was going to ask I've you if you did some school. coaching yeah i've i uh, i've taught at the drama schools here in australia um put together programs uh, screen acting programs wow. and so um the funny thing is the um television school i'm working is right now of course, they just see me as COVID safety officer. And so I'm quietly dropping in things like, so where do you get your actors from? Because yeah. they have to, they have to get their act, you know, they have to uh, call the agencies for the actors. Right. So I'm quietly sort of working my way in there, just going, and by the way, you watch sci fi shows at all. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the producers. I hear that Farscape's pretty good. Those, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
One of the young producers, I've got a Sabre light that I use now, which is just a little bit shorter than three, or, um, you know, um, 1.5. Yeah. A double Sabre light, but the light is dreadful. It's not a good light. I want a really blue light. So I'm going to take that on set because I have to show what 1.5 is, you know, between each other. So, um, you know, but uh, they go, so one of the producers said, so your background? And I said, oh, you know, I've done a bit of acting there. Yeah. She said, I thought so. Yeah. Mm. And left it at that. You know? yeah. <laughs> Plant a seed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Watch the tree grow. You you were on a show. I, I wanted to bring this one up, too, because I saw you in Punisher, you know, in the the early 90s, especially. There was a, a, just a ton of science fiction shows coming out around that time, but there wasn't a lot of access to a lot of them. So, you know, anything that would come out, I would try to try to watch. Well, there was one show, it was kind of a strange show, it was called uh, Time Tracks. And I remember you showing up oh, on yes. that one. Oh, yes. That was fun. <laughs> that was uh, part of that whole um, American production that came down to the Gold Coast. And that was yeah. a lot of fun. Because we weren't used to, you know, the only things that were happening in Australian television were your usual cop shows and um, medical shows um, and the budgets were really really small for that and suddenly you had these huge budgets from American productions coming in and that was fantastic I remember being strung up I think I was meant to be a colonel in some army and uh, I, I, <laughs> I was meant to fly in uh, in, in this particular sequence yep. uh, with a backpack Okay. <laughs> so I arrive on set. The, the, the driver takes me, picks me up at the airport, and we go on set. And I see in the distance these two cranes, massive cranes, full extension, with a little wire rope. Oh, no, it was wire between them. Oh, boy. And uh, the driver said, Gee, I, I pity the poor person going up in there, in oh, there no. today. And I said, well, what 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 do you say? <laughs> he said, <laughs> no, that's for someone that's going up." I said, "Oh hell no, that's me." <laughs> I'm not very on heights, not great on heights at all. So yeah, I hate heights. <laughs> I go to costume, makeup, and I'd say, "This is what's going to happen. You're going to be swung from one end of the crane all the way down to the other, and you're firing a machine gun at the same time." I said, "Right," and it was a little oozy. He said, put that in your right hand. There's a strap there so it won't fall. And just you, what you have to do with your left hand is you've got something on your chest and just keep rubbing it like that as if you're, you know, moving, going right across the sky. I mean, right. Okay. So they, they put me in this harness. They haul me up to the middle <laughs> and then they haul me all the way back. And just yes. before the end of this particular piece of wire, there was a kink in the damn cable and I'm okay. I'm sweating like bullets, you know, <laughs> as it goes back, it goes over the kink and I go, Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> and this person down below says, you're right. I'm going, yeah, yeah. And I said, get ready. And I said, what for? And they said, we are going now. <laughs> <laughs> and they just turn the cameras over. And I flew. I know, man, that was the scariest damn time. I had to do it three times. Oh my gosh, that that would have been my uh, last day of acting. I think. <laughs> yeah. The, the the thing was, could could you do it again and maybe not look so terrified? <laughs> you are meant you are meant to be a colonel in the air force. I went, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it probably got easier maybe the second time. I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I saw you on uh, Mission Impossible. They 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 did the remake, and you had a. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you appeared on yeah. that, on that. We had um, uh, Phil uh, Phil Morris, who was also on that show. Um, really nice guy. Came in. Yeah, yeah, just a just a terrific guy, and I. I uh, I used to love Mission. I watched the the old one, which had Phil Morris's oh, yes. dad was yes. in the old one, and uh, uh, I used to watch it. So I loved it, and I I saw that uh, that you were on there as well. So that's uh, that's kind of kind of neat. Yes. That was a that's a neat one to me, and that was a good cast. 
Oh, that was fantastic. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, it was pretty uh yeah. pretty good. That's uh I was trying to think. There was there was a couple other I wanted to ask you about. Uh, well, there was one called Flipper. Flipper was the one you were um, uh, Count uh, Vincent? Vincent in my Yeah, that? I did a of roles in it, but the funny thing is that was Jessica Elba before she became Jessica. You know, I know forgot today. about that. Yeah, yeah, she was yeah. uh, she was pretty yeah. young in that one. Yeah. And um I think she did two to three years on that show. Yeah. I came on twice in different roles. But uh and that was a lot of fun. Um and then of course, you know, she becomes Jessica Elba. Yeah. <laughs> Huge. Yeah, she got a little uh, I I, the, I I don't rem you know, I, I watched some of those flippers, but I remember she did a show called Dark Angel that uh, James Cameron. Yes, that's right. Had yes. put on, and that's that's kind of the the yeah. the one I really kind of remember her from. But yeah, she uh, yeah she got a little bigger since then. Yeah. So much. yeah. <laughs> were you were you on uh, Preacher? Did you did you have an appearance on Preacher? Yes, uh, Preacher number four, episode four, um, yeah. and uh, and that came out of the blue, and they wanted a New Zealand um diplomat or a new zealand prime minister or whatever yeah so i said yeah sure i had a ball on that one um that was a pretty the funny uh, thing is all the supporting cast shows. get blown up or killed some way yeah. <laughs> um but you saw that right i was blown up with a grip oh, yeah. in a box <laughs> <laughs> yes yep yeah sure did yep. <laughs> but that was uh i worked with pip torrens who was in the crown. Right. And because, you know, the funny thing is you get to see, you don't get to know who you're working with until you arrive in the makeup van and then you've got all the photos in front of you um, of all the characters. And I went, oh my God, I know that person. He's, and, um, <laughs> and I looked through my, my sides for the day, uh, what the scenes, um, and which are the smaller versions of the larger scripts. And uh, of course I was working with Pip. So that was, uh, I went, oh, great, fantastic. Um, yes. And that was a wonderful, wonderful day. I had a day there. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's, 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 that has to be kind of fun when you show up and you're like, oh, somebody here. I know yeah. it'd be like anything else, anything you do, you're a little less nervous when you know somebody. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I was, uh, and I went, oh, oh, they've got real fire here. So this is a big budget. Yeah. <laughs> they, had this, they had a chimney in there with this real fire uh, gas fire going because i walked around the back of the set and they had this huge gas tank and i thought yeah big budget big, big budget, budget. <laughs> <laughs> is there is there a genre that you haven't done that you would like to do i was thinking of action thriller but i wouldn't be an action thriller person i don't know I'm just That's what I mean. yeah <laughs> brains behind it the brain. So I don't have to get out my scene run. You know, I mean, I, I look at Tom Cruise running, and I'm going, "How are you? How long are you going to do this, Tom? How long oh are you going to keep running for?" Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you broke your ankle trying to. You know, is it all just about how young can I keep going? Give it up, Tom. Just That's right. It's okay to slow down. <laughs> just slow down, man. <laughs> um, but, um, no, I, I really. Um, I love watching the Fast and Furious, and I'm amazed what that, what the actors actually yeah. do because physically, you really, really have to be on top of your game and be incredibly fit. Right. Um, otherwise, you just get left in the dust. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, no. yeah. If, if you were on that, if you're in the, one of those movies, I'm sure there's a lot of one upping going on. You don't want to be the guy that's left behind. All the time. Oh no! What, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those guys are really, you know. Sort of <laughs> oh, that's that's great. That's great. Well, sir, this is this has been terrific. I thank you so much for taking a little bit of time uh, today. Pleasure. It's a pleasure. I've been looking. Farscape is absolutely hands down my and and I'm a Star Trek fan, but that's my favorite. All right. Okay. Sci-fi show. Uh, all time i've i've said that uh since it was out so this is this is a big day for me i was really looking forward to oh uh, thank you very much mike <laughs> Pleasures. Pleasures. yes sir is um before i let you go is is there anywhere that 
our um, listeners, our, our viewers, you know, where can they find you at? Are you on social media? Oh, um, I'm not great on social media, but I do have an Instagram account um, uh, where I'm uh, posting my artwork. In fact, I've got a couple of pieces here I'll show you before I go. Um, yeah. Uh, this, this is what I'm doing because I'm, you know, I don't think work is going to come back the same way. So I'm having to not reinvent, but go back. I do love most, which is photography. And I have to fococus on that and that. Um, and art, which I don't have to go, you know, I can just do it at home. But this is yeah. one piece I did recently on a board. Let's this. So this is Oh, look did, at that. Did, so this is just a, what do you call it? Um, love that. So this is oil on board. Yeah, I was so, going to ask you, yeah, what uh, what was your... What, yeah, what so you basically use? you prep the board first and this is just yeah. a, you know, three, five, yeah. five, five whatever. And you, um, once you prep the board and dry it, then you can start working on it in oils. Um, yeah, that's true. I should have brought, uh, I should have brought my wife in. She's an artist. She would appreciate this. So this is, this is actually, oil. I'm finishing this one. Yeah. I and love this is that. oils. So I've let it dry for a wee while because I had to have some gloss on it. And I'm have you named that working. one? Sorry? Have you named that one? No, not yet. Yeah, but, I, I um, like that one. And show and tell. I know. This is, this is great. I, I, I'm i always amazed that creative people, they're always good at several different you know? things. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's a, a, just a lemon. That's an oil oil. I like it's that oil. though. It's a good use of color. I like the shading and the coloring. I, Thank you. I don't know a whole lot about the art other than I, you know, I watch my right. wife. Now photography. That's, that's really good. Yeah, let's see some of the photography. This, Look this at that. Is um a rather big piece. So you know that almost looks like a painting. That is oh, that's amazing. So yeah, yeah so you're that's really talented. So oh look, keeps me off the streets. Not for long. <laughs> So yeah. So yeah, you're keeping busy. So, um Lani Tupu voiceover talks, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna Hang find on. some of these books. At I'm Instagram. Gonna to you. I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna see, hear you doing that Irish accent at some point. Um oh voiceover Lani Tupu talks. Instagram. Instagram, got it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's so, cool. So um, that's that. You know, um, I'll I'll post. I begin posting some work, um, some paintings and stuff, and photo yeah. photo photographs up there soon. So I've really got to get my yeah A into G and uh, <laughs> some work. You gotta get moving. <laughs> I gotta get moving. I, yeah, I do. Which, by the way, your yes. uh, your manager, your agent. I, I'm not sure, but Gene. Um, oh yes, Gene. Love it. Wonderful. Thank so you. nice yeah just has been just the 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 nicest you know uh, uh helpful just terrific yes, I, I want yes. yeah so that's uh yeah you, you can pass that Hi, on yeah yeah <laughs> she uh just wonderful i i really appreciate the the help that's, pleasure uh, that's oh nice. great well thank, thank you so much. much sir yeah i this is uh this has been uh great i'm gonna wrap it up and and probably Thank head you. to bed. You're you're just starting your day. You're just getting in the middle of the afternoon now. Yep, I've got to go and uh, go and prep my book again. Keep reading. <laughs> Keep I should have asked you who won some of the sporting events that were happening tonight. So I could have, I could have, or, or I guess you could tell if you had anything going on in the morning. I, mean, I don't know how that works. There's got to be a way I could take advantage of that, but I don't know how. To. Oh, <laughs> smart enough. <laughs> okay. oh well thank you and um keep up the good work in the hospitals and uh and uh you know if it comes if we ever get to do uh, production this way you, you you are coming over and we'll find a role for you i would love to do that i, I would i would love to come visit i don't know yeah i could bring some donuts yeah no 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 <laughs> do better than that all right, Thank I'll you. hold you to it. I'm just going. You're going. You one day you're going to open your door, and I'm going to be standing there in Australia, be like, "I'm yes. ready, make yes. me famous." Yes. <laughs> we'll measure you up first. <laughs>
All yeah. right, sir. Well, thank right. you so much. And, and please, you know, uh, at some point, please come back. I, I know my son was really wanting to meet you and he's a little under the weather, so he couldn't come on here with me. But uh, oh, definitely, well, definitely going to have you well. come back. Yes, sir. Wish him well and uh, uh, yeah, uh, with his film study, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. He's he's such a talented uh, uh, kid. He's in his um, junior year at college so he's all right okay he's writing he's done done a few short films and yes he just uh, good. uh having a blast with it and it's good i'm, I'm biased you know as a parent but i, I think he's really talented. of course yeah but <laughs> <laughs> all right so we'll, uh, we'll we'll talk to you again soon and, and thank you again for for doing this this has been great. thank you very much thank you take all care right, stay sir. safe <laughs> thank you very much bye-bye all right, so that was uh, Lonnie Tupu, and what a nice guy, and such a, a, a talented actor. It's so weird, you know, I'm talking to uh, Bylar Crace from Farscape, and I can hear the, you know, I hear the voice, but he's being so nice, which is so different from the character he played on Farscape, so uh, that was, uh, that was kind of neat, uh, but such a talented actor, and he, and, you know, he, he directs, he coaches, he's, a, he's obviously a safety COVID supervisor, he does artwork, he's a photographer, just a really talented guy, so I hope, hope you enjoyed that, that was, a, that was a big day for me, that was definitely a, a bucket list uh, person that I wanted to, uh, to speak to. Um, thank you for listening, you know, we've, we've mentioned before, but really appreciate uh, you uh, including us in your day you know we know there's a lot of options out there for you to choose from so we really appreciate you taking the time with uh, with us uh please check us out on our website meistercon.com you can find us on, on facebook under meistercon if you um feel like helping out you know helping the podcast we're we're building our studio at the moment we've got the building uh we're just fixing it up you know any uh any small amount is helpful you can do that at uh, patreon.com slash MeisterCon, and we'll give you some early access items and some, some pretty neat stuff. May even bring you on the podcast. So, you know, definitely check that out. Um, thank you, everybody, again, and we'll see you again real soon.